extraordinary work going on in all over the world, uh, in, in the Netherlands and in France and in England and Australia. And, um, and, and these countries, they have particular characteristics, particular strengths, uh, excellence in, in research as, as well as the United States. France, uh, I mean, we, we've heard from the folks in the Netherlands and, uh, and we will again, but I also wanted to say that the, the researchers and clinicians in France are uh, doing an extraordinary job in terms of large-scale infrastructure on the, on, the, on the government level and also on the Association Francaise Contre la Myopathy, the AFM, the French Muscular Disease Association, uh, who is sponsoring the meeting today uh, and has always been a generous uh, sponsor of these kind of activities. Uh, the French are, are just a really outstanding group of researchers, uh, I think often uh, overlooked uh, in the, the collection of FSHD research. And so, I mean, with that, I want to say, it's, it's a, it's a, and this is in Nice and Montpellier and, and Paris, and um, so with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Sabrina Sacconi from the University of Nice, uh, France. And Dr. Sacconi will talk about the advances in the care of FSHD, and, and thank you. Uh, thank you very much to have invited me to talk about uh, these uh, advances in care of FSHD. To try to uh, summarize these advances and also to present you the work that we have done in the last year, I would like to present you some data about the French National FSHD Registry that was uh, uh, launched uh, one year ago and uh, that is founded by the AFM, the French Association Against uh, Myopathy, with the aim of collecting epi epidemiological data to promote clinical research and to develop a standard of care for FSHD patients and also to try to validate outcome measure in a natural history study and to facilitate recruitment, future recruitment of patients in a clinical trial. The data uh, of this uh, registry has been uh, established in agreement with items of the pre-existing registry, uh, like the one in Rochester, the Italian registry, and uh, the Netherlands registry, and uh, to enable future international registry harmonization. And there is a dedicated database and website uh, that has been developed to enable uh, online data input. The data content uh, uh, is related to the genetic diagnosis, muscular and extramuscular involvement, uh, as for example, uh, the ocular involvement, respiratory, cardiac, gastrointestinal, the hearing loss. Uh, we speak about all this type of involvement today, and, but also some other information like uh, central nervous system involvement and the endocrinological involvement and metabolic involvement. Some of these uh, uh, involvement are comorbidities that can be present uh, in FSHD patient, and uh, they may change uh, the interpretation uh, of data. We also collect data on pain and fatigue and patient care, but I will not talk about this because uh, uh, some other people uh, will do. The patients that are included in the registry are genetically confirmed FSHD1 patient, uh, but also genetically confirmed FSHD2 patient. Uh, the patient may enter the registry uh, mm, by filling a self-reported form uh, or a clinical evaluation form. FSHD2 patient may only enter the registry uh, by a, a clinical evaluation form. Uh, we collected data of about uh, 300 patients, 143 women and 157 men. You see that uh, the center that uh, contributed uh, uh, most is NICE, because I am there and so I'm the one that coordinates this registry. And there is a lot of work to be done again in the next month. Uh, the age of the patient included were from 11 to 89. The main age at the time of the inclusion was 54, 
And uh, the mean disease duration was 24 years, and the main age of onset was 34. Most of the patients included are FSHD1, 95%, and uh, only few FSHD2 have been included because the uh, molecular uh, diagnosis for FSHD2 is available uh, since very few months. Uh, talking about genetic data, uh, we have 31 patients included uh, that carry from one to three repeat uh, on chromosome four, uh, uh, 153 patients from four to seven, and 104 patients from eight to ten. <coughs> Uh, if we talk about genotype-phenotype correlation, we found uh, a nice correlation between number of repeat and uh, 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 severity of clinical phenotype, although with some ex exception. Uh, this patient here uh, have uh, uh, from uh, um, one to three repeat, and uh, um, they, they have uh, a very early, uh, they have a very late age of onset because uh, they were supposed to be affected since uh, uh, childhood, but they are not. They have a uh, late onset. Uh, but when we look closely to this patient, uh, seven, uh, five of them uh, were, the mos were mosaic. Uh, one patient have a uh, very strange rearrangement uh, between chromosome 4 and chromosome 10, and um, uh, for one patient we couldn't, uh, we couldn't find any explanation uh, about uh, <coughs> this, uh, the fact that uh, it was less affected than expected. Also for these three patients that carry four, uh, four repeat, uh, we have a very late uh, age of onset. Uh, these patients are not mosaic, so there is no explanation. And, uh, all the, uh, and uh, to identify this type of patient is very important be because maybe we can find something that can be protective and then, uh, in this patient. And then this will be the work of uh, in collaboration with uh, all the people that we collaborate usually, so the Netherlands people, but also maybe some other, uh, to find out what, what is going on in this patient. On the other side, we have patients that are more affected than expected. Uh, these 12 patients uh, have uh, from 7 to, to 9 repeat, and they, are, uh, they have a very early uh, age of onset, and also uh, we will see in the next slide, they are uh, uh, all uh, wheelchair-bounded, uh, and they have uh, hearing loss, uh, and so on. And uh, from Eight of these 12 patients uh, turn out to be FSHD1 plus FSHD2. But we also have four other patients uh, in which we don't know why they are so affected. So uh, another gene can be a modifier or maybe another uh, comorbidity condition uh, can contribute in the fact that they are more affected than expected. So again, it's very interesting to identify this type of patient because we can learn uh, from this patient uh, uh, many information on uh, genetic and epigenetic in FSHD. It's true that uh, in, uh, there is a, an important heterogeneity in clinical presentation, so we can distinguish in infantile onset uh, less than 10 years. The classical onset are described uh, as patients uh, developing the disease before the age of 20, and then uh, I put late onset patients that uh, develop the disease at more than 20. But when we look at the reported age of onset of our patient, what we find out? Uh, we found out uh, that uh, there is a, an important uh, number of patients uh, developing the disease before the age of 10, and uh, most of these patients are uh, real infantile onset FSHD1, and, uh, most, and uh, other patients were are FSHD1 plus 2. So if you have a very early onset and you have uh, seven to, to, to nine repeat, maybe you have to look to other modifier genes. If you look at the number of the patients that uh, started the disease before the age of 20, we see that they are not the majority. Mm -hmm. well, uh, the majority uh, is found when you look uh, at patients that started this disease before the age of 40. Why this thing? I think this is because there is an underestimation of the reported age of onset by the patient. 
uh, because uh, patient uh, doesn't mm, feel sick because they develop the disease very progressively. Uh, facial involvement um, is not very recognized by the patient uh, and also uh, shoulder involvement is frequently attributed to other facts that are muscular disease. So they come to our observation when they have lower leg involvement. And uh, if you don't ask uh, with a lot of question uh, and very specific question to the patient exactly when it started the disease, uh, it will tell you that the disease started when it comes to your um, attention. And uh, uh, I think that this underestimation is real because when you look at the data in the self-reported form and the data in clinical evaluation, we see that patients uh, tend to underestimate uh, the reported age of onset. And it's very important because we cannot classify patients in base of the age of onset if this age of onset is unreliable. Uh, ocular involvement, uh, we all know that uh, in a few patients, uh, um, code syndrome may be present. What is code syndrome? It's uh, uh, an exudative retinitis uh, uh, that uh, dilatation of um, uh, retinal vessel has been found uh, in uh, many adult FSHD patients, but is uh, frequently asymptomatic. In few patients, uh, this uh, uh, telangiectasia uh, evolve and uh, exudative retinal detachment uh, is the consequence. Uh, in a study that was done in collaboration with Jeffrey Statland, uh, we found that uh, most of the patients that have this uh, uh, retinal detachment were patients carrying uh, uh, two repeated units. And uh, the, the code syndrome was frequently associated with neurosensory hearing loss, was frequently asymmetric, and, touch, and uh, was more frequent in women than in men. So, uh, what about the data in the registry? The data in the registry confirm this study because we found eight patients with code syndrome, seven women and one man. In all of them, uh, it was bilateral and asymmetric. Seven have less than two repeat. One patient was a mosaic and one patient uh, has uh, uh, four repeat. But this patient doesn't uh, experience uh, retinal detachment. In five patients, um, uh, uh, atelangiectasia was associated to retinal, retinal detachment. In three patients, uh, this detachment was prevented by laser therapy. And five patients have also hearing loss. So this is a very rare condition for FSHD patient, but has to, to be researched in uh, people with infantile onset disease. This situation is much more frequent. Uh, because 38% uh, uh, of our patient, it means 114 patients over 300 reported, that frequently they have red irritated eyes, burning eyes, excessive tearings. And uh, all these patients presented with a major orbicularis oculi weakness. And uh, 34 patients, so 12% of them, report a complication of this weakness, uh, episode of uh, repeated uh, conjunctivitis. And if you look at the distribution, uh, the patients that are more keen to develop this type of problem are patients that are more severely affected. Uh, in between patients uh, uh, having 8 to 10 repeat, if uh, we uh, take off patients with the FSHD1 and FSHD2 together, uh, there is uh, no, no, no such a problem. Uh, this problem may develop in patients carrying 8 to 10 repeat only when they are very old because age may contribute in aggravating this type of problem. Uh, what we can do about it? Uh, one possibility is uh, to use artificial, artificial uh, um, uh, um, La, drop, uh, but is not very effective. And uh, now we are studying in uh, in this another possibility that is the possibility of a surgery, uh, and it's a surgery that is the opposite of the uh, upper uh, eyelid surgery. So basically, 
you uh, you advance the lower eyelid retractor. This one example, we have two patients that has been operated, so it's too early to to talk about this possibility, uh, but can be maybe uh, in the future uh, an option. Uh, what about hearing loss? Alors, in in our uh, registry, uh, we have very few patients reporting hearing loss. I don't know why. Uh, only 18 patients. Uh, 12 of them use an hearing aid. Eight of them have a, a short repeat size. So uh, it was much more frequent in patient with uh, uh, again with infantile onset. <coughs> and uh, uh, four of them develop hearing loss after the age of 70. I think that in this case, these four patients have hearing loss not because they, are, they have an FSHD, but maybe because they, uh, they are uh, older. So we have to distinguish when we make study, uh, I think, uh, and we study extramuscular uh, involvement uh, between these two types of patients. Uh, respiratory involvement. Again, 25% of patients had a respiratory involvement, which is a very high rate of patient. 12% uh, of them, 36 patients, are in non-invasive ventilation. But when we look at the causes of this non-invasive ventilation, we see that uh, 12 patients uh, uh, are in uh, uh, ventilation because of sleep apnea, 21 because they have a restrictive lung disease, and three patients have both. When we look at this distribution of respiratory involvement, we see again that infantile onset are more keen to develop the respiratory involvement, but there, are, there were also some patients with uh, late onset and uh, high number of repeat. Uh, we uh, try to find out what are the risk factors to develop respiratory involvement. Some are related to the disease, like for example, early onset, long disease duration, and wheelchair-bounded patients. There is also the, uh, an increased number of patients that have uh, uh, respiratory involvement because they have abdominal and axial weakness. Uh, the age also is a risk factor and the weight. Patients that, uh, that are underweight and overweight seems to be more keen to develop respiratory involvement. There is also the fact that I think that uh, uh, respiratory involvement is overestimated in patients uh, with orbicularisaurus weakness because of technical problem in functional respiratory test. So we have to be careful uh, on this point, and I think that when we will revise data, taking in mind this point, uh, we will lower the <coughs> percentage of respiratory involvement. What about cardiac involvement? Again, we have a very high rate, 70% of patients. But when we look at the patient, uh, we found out that uh, uh, most of these patients were men. And the mean age was 57 years. So only three patients uh, were infantile onset FSHD patient. And these patients have a very mild cardiac involvement, uh, consisting in nocturnal episode of sinostatic cardia. In 41 patients, there was risk factor to develop uh, cardiovascular disease, like, for example, elevated blood pressure, overweight, diabetes, hypercholesterolemia, smoke. And most of the uh, cardiac involvement can be explained by this risk factor. 10 have left ventricular hypertrophy that in, was associated to elevated blood pressure, 9 had ischemic cardiomyopathy, and 5 auricular fibrillation. Uh, still, 17 of them have sinus tachycardia, so maybe sinus tachycardia can be something uh, in FSHD, but it's very benign uh, symptoms that can be treated with low doses of beta blockers. Uh, I finished talking about dysphagia. Most of you have uh, heard this data yesterday in uh, nutrition. 14 0.5% uh, uh, of patients have dysphagia. Again, this is a problem that is reported mostly uh, in uh, infantile onset uh, patients. Um, some of the patients uh, have late onset disease and dysphagia. Again, I think that if we look at the causes of dysphagia, uh, we will find maybe different causes because uh, late onset dysphagia may be due to uh, the fact that the people are getting old and, on, and not by the disease. 
uh, most of the patient, patient with this, uh, dysphagia has facial weakness, and in some of these patients there was weight loss, uh, 70 of them, and uh, in uh, infantile onset patient the weight loss uh, can be really important. For patients that develop aspiration pneumonia, and uh, in two patients uh, dysphagia was a major complication because they, they choked to death. So uh, be careful if you have this type of problem. Uh, as I said yesterday, uh, because uh, it can be life-threatening. Uh, if you look uh, uh, at dysphagia and weight, we found that people underweight uh, are frequently people that has uh, dysphagia, so a patient with infantile onset, while classical onset and late onset are more overweight. Underweight is not good because uh, uh, you lose your muscle, and overweight is not good because you may develop uh, comorbidity like cardiac involvement, hypercholesterolemia, and so on. So in conclusion, it's true that there is a very heterogeneous uh, clinical involvement in FSHD that may be explained by genetic and epigenetic factor. But we have also to consider factors as, for example, age of the patient, gender, comorbidity, concurrent therapy, uh, habits. So we have to collect all these data to, to, to do a right interpretation. We need maybe a new classification. Because uh, we cannot use, uh, for example, the age of onset uh, or only the clinical inv involvement to classify patients. And it's very important to classify them in the three different uh, categories I told you because of the future clinical trial and because of the fact that this patient may have different type of involvement and different progression. So a lot of work has still to be done. I agree <coughs> that uh, collaboration is the way to do it. Uh, and maybe the fact that... Uh, we have to put together data on different national uh, registries to create an international registry and uh, to have enough patience to draw appropriate conclusion on all this issue. I would like to thank all the people in France that participated, in particular the IFM that founded this project, and the uh, patient FSHD group, the French patient FSHD group that helped me really a lot to disseminate uh, this project. Thank you very much.